Hi from Las Vegas, I'm Joe. Hi, Sergio. Hey. I'm here in my garage. No, just kidding. How's how's the weather? It's beautiful today. I'm, I miss it. Las Vegas weather. Yeah, this is the best time of year for weather in Las Vegas. It's a nice and fresh at night, and it's even kill during the day, sunny and warm. So it's it's a good time to be here. How how warm it is right now? I think it's I'd say it's six, anywhere from I don't know. Let me look it up. But I mean, it feels seventy two degrees. It feels just right. That that's that's perfect, Sergio. For those that will that are watching or will watch the video in the future that don't know who you are, can you please just share a little bit about yourself? Uh, I just I know you are an SEO ninja expert, a practitioner, uh, but some people might not know that about you. Can you just give them your two cents? Absolutely. I've been 10 years in the internet industry, in the internet marketing industry. Um, I have done everything from developing basic HTML through, um, like you said, being a, a very good SEO. Right now I'm delving a lot into video, social media, and uh, it's an ever-changing thing. I like to be, I'm the guy that's, um, I like to be the X guy. I like to be behind the scenes. So. For me to agree to do this is um, is a leap, but I like you a lot, uh, uh, Angel, so I'll do it for you, definitely. Um, so anyways, um, what I do is I market, right now I'm marketing niches from brick and mortar stores, and furniture stores, to spiritual people and uh, network marketing professionals. Uh, I have never been the one to niche down to figure out the new puzzle that is happening. For example, I'll give you a very current example. I'm working with an insurance company right now. And uh, what I like to do is to run many experiments. And for example, right now SEO, it's not like the greatest thing. You, you know, I think SEO is phasing out. But um, what we found was that on social media people that buy this type of insurance locally they hang out a lot in groups and uh, especially in uh, spanish-speaking groups we started marketing there we did a couple of pieces and we got leads within 10 minutes so that is my claim to fame i like i i, I like to use whatever we whatever tools on the internet cone it down and tell you who i am I, I am the guy behind the scenes that, like to, that likes to hone down the, the right tool at the right time in the right place for the right business. It could be social media, it could be SEO, or it could be, you know, tweaking a website or doing video. Like I told you, I don't niche down. I like to... Uh, open up my skill sets and figure out different puzzles for different businesses because every every business is different. It, it, um, makes, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yes. Hey. So um, let me ask you, sorry. Sergio, why you why you say or why you you said something that caught my my attention? You said. Uh, you think SEO is facing out. Why Why you believe that? Why you, you think that? Okay. Most of the local searches you do right now, you're, the top five results, apart from maps, find uh, Yelp. You're going to find Angie's List. You're going to find all these big sites that it's just, you want to compete against them, you need millions of dollars in SEO to, to and maybe you won't even compete because they're so huge, right? SEO is um, one of the main qualifications is, is the authority of the site. So the bigger the site, the more authority. Sites like Yelp and all these other guys, they have a lot of authority. They're hard to beat. SEO per se, it, it would be more of um, optimizing within those platforms, which is still SEO in a certain way, 
but it's not the traditional thing where you're trying to game the system or you're trying to game Google's ad algorithm up of the searches. So the other game is changing a lot. Uh, people, I think people are going more Asian. Of course, uh, it's there's nothing ever encompassing. And, uh, when people are searching for things these days, they're using Facebook. They're using all the all the big sites. You have to adapt to those things. And then, you know, if you want to call it a CEO or if you want to call it whatever you want to call it, it's optimizing or looking for ways to capture attention on, on those platforms. And there's so many ways these days. I mean, you just have to be creative, be on top of the tools, and, and do your best to make the best experiments to to get those those results. So, do you think? So, in an, in a nutshell, you say we can we can say that social media is killing SEO. I won't say. Look, I'm gonna tell you about a book that I read about two years ago. It's called. Uh, it's by Daniel Burris. Uh, it's uh, it's about the future. It'll come to mind the title, but it said it said a very important thing. It's going to be virtual reality, and the web is going to be in three D, and you're just gonna you're you're gonna walk into into uh, Amazon, for example, and see things to the right and to the left, and that's where the web is going. But still, there's there's millions of people that are not in that. There's going to be a WordPress site. Well, that site's still going to exist. Those are the things. So you're still going to have search change. Uh -huh. And the uh, machine learning and the AIs and everything. And everything's going to coexist because fast that people like certain platforms and they'll stay there. So you're going to have to cater to those people. Right? There's going to be channel. Everybody's going to still like their. 2D websites, while well, somebody's going to be navigating in their Oculus Rift through Amazon. And it'll be the same. It'll be valid. And you know, you're going to have to try to adapt your marketing, whether your niche is that person, the 3D person, or the, or the Amazon person. So, so I don't know if that answers. Yeah, no, it's, true, it's true. Everything, I think, I think it'll, con, it'll, it'll coexist. Um, that's, that's. So as you know, I'm going to launch a new site. Um, uh, the new business I'm going to in, when I, when we move to Florida. Do you think it's still a good idea for me to create content that people is searching, or just you know the the for the search engines, or just stay away from that? No, do that, do that because you can leverage it. Uh, there's always going to be somebody that's looking for uh, the right avenue or the right. Well, give me an example of a business. So um, let's let's talk about let's let's use the, what I'm going to open as an example: sales, improving sales. Let's say there's a kid coming out of college, and uh, he knew he didn't learn enough to do the the, the things necessary to um, to to do his job. So he's gonna look for sales and marketing, of course. And I think for that type of content, yes, that's gonna be very relevant referring to since I, it's what I work work most with SEO is local businesses or uh, if, if you're if, if a content marketing strategy I think is a whole whole nother beast there are content yes definitely that's always going to be um, that's always always going to be something content 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 yes so okay. i don't think that's dead i think somebody is gonna find that piece of content eventually that i have put it up 10 years ago on youtube that still get views that still get hits because they have valuable information that somebody's looking for so if i'm going to create a, my, my content strategy should i still do like the i uh, do the keyword research and I find what people are searching, create a topic around those keywords, do the search on Google, see the relevant search terms in the bottom, create, let's say I create, um, I create uh, or I plan 20, 30 pieces of content to schedule for the next one per week or maybe more. So that's still a viable uh, strategy? 
Absolutely. And you're a genius at it because you create that content and then you turn it into five other things that you share in different places. Uh, I see that's super valid and I would totally vouch and allow for that if, uh, if that's what you're doing. How? Be constant. Yes. How, how, you, how, you, how can I leverage the video? You say you're doubling down on video. How, how can I use video to... I haven't been involved in the search engine optimization part of the video. I know there are some files that I can add to make it make it more credible. I know that you can add caption and transcriptions, but can you give me more and maybe a background and an insight that I, I'm not aware of right now? Okay. So right now, uh, one thing that I'm that I'm looking that's working in uh, specific niches is uh, videos are informative from anywhere from two to six minutes, right? With a good hook. First, you gotta hook people's attention. So you gotta see uh, 15, the first 15 seconds. So that's very important. You know, get attention, hook. Uh, I'm using a lot of motion. Here in Vegas, we have a lot of backdrops with a lot of motion, with a lot of things. That seems to capture a lot of attention. Um, so those are the things that I'm doing and mostly on uh, social media and putting out a lot of volume. Right now I have a contract with an MLM, with a network marketing guy, and we're doing 100 videos. We're up to 50. And believe me, when you commit to doing a lot of, uh, a lot of these things, the exponential effect that it has, you know, so all of a sudden you're in video 55 and, and you start getting raving fans saying, hey, I watch your video from number one. And you're like, what? And people like going back and, and seeing all those things. So the, it's, it's very valuable. Uh, like tying your content strategy on the video to to have that constancy and, and you know program out to I think volume is very important too. you just uh, uh, Social media is so ephemeral, but you have to create volume to, to stay on top of mind of uh, people Is there is anything I can do to improve? Um, the SEO when when I embed a video into a website I know I'm going to upload tags and the right keyword for the title and transcription and captions in YouTube, but what about on the website? Is there anything I can do on the website? Simply embed it. Um, it's like a little check mark on, on your video. It gives it more clout. It, uh, it, tells, it, it tells the internet and Google that, uh, that your video is being shared in a way, so it's, it's a little more point. It's another point. Um, everything will act in synergy. There's really not much, I mean, unless you put on the transcription alongside the video and uh, a lot of the things that you already do. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned them on these videos, but I know that you transcribe them and then you get um, the, um, the, the SRT files, yeah. which is the, the files that put up the little the cl cl closed uh, captions. The captions, the yeah. captions on the videos. That's that's catching a lot of attention these days too, and I can see a difference. But in my in the things that I'm running, ten to twenty percent more engagement when there's captions in the video. Wow. Let me let me ask you, sir. Here you mentioned domain authority when people com when we com uh, compete with huge companies that have big budgets. I bought a brand new domain, and I know I'm going to have to do a few things to uh to come up in the search engines one thing i know that that uh domain age is, a, is an issue and like i said i just bought this domain name i read that if i add a http a, a secure certificate and ssl that google will boost my trustworthiness or it will boost my rankings yes that's the next big thing everybody uh, actually i think wordpress is, is the latest thing they're doing it now um, everybody's gonna have to go HTTPS. Yes, it's like uh, two years ago, two three years ago, when the mobile thing was going on, that nobody, that people were still behind on mobile websites, and Google had that as a very big variable to rank you up there. Yes, it's a very important thing. Of course, you never know with Google. Of course, you never know depending on the content, because you still see old websites that have very relevant content come up and they're not even responsive or mobile, but there's nobody competing with them because nobody made content for that. But since you're in a very competitive niche, yeah, pick everything, every little um, every little um, edge you can get and the HTTP. 
I'm gonna do that with the new side from, from the get-go, but in my other sites, when I'm ready to transition, go full-blown HTTPS, I read that I need to do 301 redirects in a specific way to avoid being penalized for duplicate content, the HTTPS content and the HTTP content. Um, have you seen anything like that or can you point me in the right direction or I don't know, I, 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 is that true? I was listening yesterday to this book called uh, Content Think and um, they were mentioning that point specifically and um, it was a very interesting stance and viewpoint that they had. Uh, and the thing that they said is that there's no such thing as duplicate content. Hmm. Uh, so I don't know. I will not have a direct answer to that. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's always it's a matter of opinion. The way that I've been running my business, and it's just been taking off a massively, Angel, is uh, you come up that what you said is a hypothesis. You use the scientific method. So you make a hypothesis as to whether something is duplicate content or not, or if it's gonna work or not. Basically, is it gonna work and bring you results? That's, that's the thing. So then you throw out experiments. And then after that, you see, right? I was gonna start shooting the insurance company I was telling you about. I was gonna start shooting 10 videos. But man, if I'm getting a lead in 10 seconds, picture in a group, I'm gonna go there and, and do that a hundred times, right? Instead yes. of taking three hours to shoot a video and all that, and maybe I'll get two leads. It's just you don't trip down tech, and that's what you do. Uh, amaze, amazingly lately. So on these things on the web, you can only assume certain things and, and run with them because everything changes so much i agree and uh, and it doesn't it, it's not even about change it's about different niches and different markets they all have different strategies because there's different different users and there's different strategies so that is the wonder of what we do and that's why we get paid the big bucks angel because we're always figuring out this puzzle right no that that's uh you're you're right let, let me let's groups are you posting in groups that you created the insurance company created or these are groups that are community created other people created community created okay i'm gonna give you a big the big um the big secret here look for there's a lot of groups popping up on facebook that, that are called craigslist facebook if you're doing local marketing, are on those like crazy, and you know there are people that are looking for stuff. You know, it's a little more general, but it's highly active. All those Craigslist groups on Facebook, um, Swap Meet group, there's there's Swap Meet. Everything that has to do with uh, with Craigslist and, and Swap Meet and uh, what else would it be? I don't know how to call it, but there's uh, these groups are uh, they're all over the place, and they're like language specific too. So I'm I'm just starting to delve into this, and it's um it's a, it's pretty cool. No, I, I noticed that I I am part of a few uh, groups that are very active, and I had to turn the notifications in in all the ones that. I want to be part, but I'm not as active on them. And I, and I know I, I say that I have to turn the, I had to turn the notifications off because I was getting so many interruptions because they are so active. But I never thought about posting a pick a product or service there. Um, and the term that you use about Facebook, uh, correctly, uh, Facebook. Uh, it's interesting to me. It's a, it's a different way to look at it because that's why you go to Craigslist. And it's true. You see, I see um, groups about people buying and selling and looking for stuff all the time. And But I never post on one to offer my services. Sure. See what happens. You know, experiment. I, I don't know, for example, your business because it's, it's a high ticket. It's a higher ticket thing. 
um, insurance is a low ticket thing and it's a thing it's a commodity it's something that everybody needs got it so like like we were saying different markets different strategies different users different sellers different buyers and figure out how to fit the pieces better let me ask you sergio so i haven't uh, installed wordpress or anything on the site it's just a blank page right now um i was getting the logo the uh, the th the final things with the logo i'm going to install the secure certificate and um i was you know just getting everything lined up what can i do so i create the site what would be your advice to me to publish that site with a bang so to have a lot of eyeballs coming to the site what can i do social media that's where all the attention is so so um besides publishing to my personal uh account or reaching out to my you know doing a little bit of outreach to people that i know that I can benefit from the products and services maybe start looking for more groups or or paying for ads and traffic and 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 just just create that awareness if you have a budget yes i would go definitely directly to uh to to facebook ads uh that's where things are right now and uh you can see i'm running what i'm running about eight to ten campaigns locally see that your engagement can go up to 20 30x engagement would be and when, it's all behavior if some users go ahead when uh, you say that go up 20 and, th and th 10 20 30 x when you pay for the post yes okay let, let me let, let me, me i'm you, gonna i'm gonna pull up one that i was just watching um let, let me ask you one one more question let me ask you one more question and 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 that will be that will be good for me right now uh what what is your feeling on using still still using press release i know when i came in when i started online press release was like a hot item to make sure you're you're you know if you have something good you're you're captured by either google news but how that works um or how relevant they still are in getting you traffic or are helping you get awareness i have not used press release in many years i have noticed some of my mentors were very big on it and i don't see them using them that much anymore so i don't have a lot of information right now on how press releases are working i think that was a tool that was used and abused by many marketers and i think that google has has uh, found that that's the case and i don't think it's it's as valuable as it was before okay down and read a press release or do you watch uh, a little mashable video saying oh something came out the the latest and greatest uh pod thing came out blah 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 and you see it and you know it in three frames and ten words no. where is your attention gonna go or, or like a Personally, you know, this came out, and the president came out and said uh, that uh, it's the latest and greatest thing. Since you know, nobody cares anymore. No, it's like attention's like you gotta grab it like that. I don't think press releases do anymore. Yeah, um, if I do, I'm I'm still debating if I do I use a few when I move to Florida, and if I use them is to capture um, new sites. So a new company, so a new company, veteran own, uh, yeah, opening town. A new company, veteran own, hire the first person. Uh, you know, just not what we offer, but what we're doing. So maybe to capture news, news people or different type. Um, but no, I'm not gonna abuse them. I'm not gonna abuse the 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 press releases. Angel. You there, Sergio? Okay. Oh. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So uh, what you were saying is that uh, you know you were planning on 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 seeing and, and informing people what you're doing and all that. Yeah, that, I'm going to experiment. I'm going to experiment. See what happens. Sergio, thank you. Thank if it'll be able to. What's that? No, thank you for the, answering those questions. I just. Uh,
um, you know, had a big question about the HTTPS and the domain authority and what type of content I'm going to create on the site. Uh, and uh, obviously create the funnel, uh, make sure that the content is in line with the funnel and uh, having all the pieces in place. Um, one thing, you know, one thing that I noticed lately coming out, uh, and this is shifting a little bit because I, I'm going from creating the, the domain authority, creating content, having, and making sure everything li lines up properly to SMS. Are you guys using SMS for anything? Not me. No? I'm not using SMS, no. Okay. I okay. do have a funnel for a, for a, yeah, no, I do have a funnel for a, a company that does a dry cleaning. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a funnel that, you know, people reach out cleaning and everything's online. So you put it your line, they go pick it up and bring it back. Concept, but very powerful. What, yes. uh, when people, when people ask for their, um, for their laundry, they get texts, right? So they get a combination of email and text. This since uh, laundry and you know getting an order fast, you know, for people to be in contact real fast with you, we run once they enter. I have these many clothes and I want to pick up. The driver gets in touch with them on SMS. Couple of automated automa automated text, but. Uh, you know that that just tells them gives them that ass that fast assurance we we got your number we got your order we're coming okay. that's the only instance that i'm using and it it works really really well that funnel is an amazing funnel that's interesting yeah i'm going to i start practicing again or using sms uh, i don't have anything to report um because i'm not using a system that tracks the op the open rates for the SMS. Um, I'm using Twilio, so I know in the states, a uh, friend of ours, uh, Chris Brisson, has Call Loop, and we can use Call Loop to track uh, open rates and delivery rates. He just opened a new system for uh, it's called Sales Messages uh, for SMS. It's like a SMS CRM. But one thing that I I know, you just gave me an idea, and I'm gonna make a note here because dry cleaners, I, you. I mentioned to you that I'm working on Facebook bots and dry cleaners is a perfect fit for Facebook bots. So Facebook dry cleaners. I'm taking a note here, dry yeah, cleaners. Uh, it, the person can send the order, the bot can answer, can send the payment, you know, the, uh, asking for the address or whatever is that needs to be done before the order, the person comes and pick it up, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It, it can be very powerful. Anyhow, my friend, thank you for your time. I really appreciate You're very it. You're welcome. I really appreciate it, and I um, uh, hope to see you soon. Okay, Angel. Talk to you later. Bye.